Hey guys, welcome to Seattle Coffee Gear. My name is John. We are in the commercial kitchen once again, and we are doing a commercial crew review of the Curtis G4 one gallon brewer. We have the Sky White single here today. They also make this in a twin version. That would just mean you'd have another brewer on the other side. It also comes in a black or a stainless. A really cool option if you want to make your cafe look custom. Uh, you could combine it with a black machine and do a black brewer, a white machine, a white brewer. Uh, you could have a really custom looking cafe setup for not a lot of custom cost, which is a pretty cool option. Right away, you'll notice on the face of this that we have a uh, 4.3 or four something inch touchscreen. Uh, this is where all the control is gonna be from on this brewer. This is the brain of the brewer. And if you look over here, you also have a spot for a USB stick. Uh, you can update software. You can even put an image on the face of this. That's your own custom image. But quick note on that is you do have to send that to Curtis so they can format it to go on here correctly. Uh, close that up there. You also have a hot water spout uh, and you have your basket here. Uh, I know some of you probably won't like this as much because this is a plastic ba basket. Uh, even if it is BPA free, some people just feel more comfortable with stainless. Uh, totally fine. I don't mind it, but that is something that I know some of you are considering. Um, go back in there. This is a one gallon maximum capacity for this brewer. Uh, you can program pretty much any volume you want on it. Uh, you'll just have to do a little bit of math and we'll cover that in the programming section on this brewer. This is honestly a great brewer. We've really been enjoying the coffee that comes off of it. It is at a slightly higher price point because it is a specialty focused brewer, but compared to some other stuff out there on the market, it does uh, punch in a really good uh, class for price. We're really excited about this brewer. Why don't we talk about some of the programming functions on it? Let's jump in and look at this menu here. Looking at this right now, we have three different recipes. Um, we have Brian's brew up here. Uh, that's a custom one that we made. Um, Brian, our commercial operations guy, he uh, programmed that one in there. But to get into the programming menu, I always forget how to do this. There you go. Just press that Curtis button a couple times. And our password is super secure. Don't tell anybody. Then you get into this new menu here. Uh, if you go in here to recipes, you can change these different recipes. So I could add in a new one here and add this fourth one. And then I can go here to edit and it takes me to this screen here. Once I am in this screen, I also have two options for a large version of that recipe and a small version of that recipe. Once we go in and actually brew a batch, you'll get to see that and how it looks on the main screen if you're using this in your cafe. But for now, let's just talk about this right here. So hopefully you can see this and these numbers right here. But what this is doing is this counts out a number of pulses here from one all the way up to 12. A pulse is it dropping a certain amount, or, amount of water uh, and then stopping. So you're gonna add in uh, these ounces here. So let's say that you're gonna have it on for uh, say 20 seconds. Uh, and then going to this next category, um, this could be my off time. And I could say I want it to do a pre-infusion for 20 seconds, uh, bloom that coffee, and then wait for 20 seconds to let it fully bloom, let all those gases come off of it, and then hit it with more water. I'm not gonna go through this boring part of programming this whole thing with you guys right now, but what I am gonna do is get back out here and we can look at the one that Brian did for this large batch. So if you see here, he has it on for 23 seconds and then off for 30 seconds, so on and so forth as this goes. Uh, and that gives him a total brew time of seven minutes and 31 seconds, 
which it is a full gallon of coffee that we're brewing. So that is about the time range. That might seem a little bit long if you're used to a five minute brew, but it comes out tasty. I can attest to that. Um, and then we also have a total ounce capacity there. And this is a one gallon brewer, so it is 128 ounces, but that is the full capacity of a one gallon container. So just a word about volumes and how that works. This is not 100% accurate. If you uh, measure the amount of water that comes off of it, it's not gonna be exactly 126 ounces. That's just not quite the purpose of this machine. And in the grand scheme of 128 ounces, five ounces here and there really isn't gonna matter that much. And you'd probably run into the same level of variance with a hand done manual pour over. Um, so that's my word on that. But then most people when they're cleaning their carafes and such at the end of the night, they're just sprinkling some Kefiza, PiroCaf, some sort of coffee equipment cleaner in their basket and just running a full batch through this into this carafe. So if you had it at exactly one gallon, or exactly one gallon with coffee in here. That coffee is absorbing some. So if you wanted to fill it up all the way uh, with coffee and then you take away the coffee, you're gonna overflow your pot. All that to say, please do not input exactly 128 ounces or try and accumulate for how much water the coffee is gonna absorb. It's just not worth the mess that your barista is gonna have to clean up at the end of the night when it overflows all over the counter and you're wondering why they're, why they're, they're there a half hour late at the end of the night. Just a little word there. Anyways, now that we've talked a little bit about that, one other thing I want to note here is this bypass volume there. So if you notice, we have a bypass of 12%. Uh, we were talking about this a uh, little bit earlier. I'm going to jump back in. You'll notice this has a bypass uh, of about 15 ounces or 12%. If you look here, on this, uh, on this basket, you'll notice it has these two holes right here. And this brewer actually has a little spot up underneath here where it can shoot water directly into here. So then if you have a filter in here that's full of coffee, you can bypass water next to it and out the hole without touching your coffee. Why would you wanna do that? If you're doing a large batch of coffee and you're using a gallon carafe like this right here, if you have a ton of coffee in here and you bloom it, it's gonna rise up pretty high. If you were to just dump water on that again, there's a good chance it would overflow and you would get grounds in your coffee pot. So what that bypass allows you to do is it allows you to brew a slightly stronger uh, batch of coffee and then add a little bit of water after it to dilute it down to the proper strength you don't get grounds in your coffee and your coffee is at the right strength. So that's why that setting is in there. That covers pretty much all of the programming there. We can also go over here to uh, these buttons here and check our temperatures. I think I want that a little bit higher. And then you can adjust your minimum brew. One note on that, this machine is actually a dual voltage machine. That means it can run on either standard 110, 120 power or a higher 220 volts. I recommend doing it for 220. We don't have that power right here, so that's why it's on 110, 120. But that means that my recovery times are a bit slower. So if I brew a batch of coffee, I have to wait for longer for it to recover and brew more coffee. I can also, do a rinse here. Uh, I'm going to enable that and we'll cover that in a second. Um, quality timer, if I enable that, um, that's going to time uh, and keep track of how long my coffee has been brewed for. Uh, we also have energy saving here where if your brewer sits for a while, maybe overnight, it'll drop it down to a certain level. So you can program that somewhat. Uh, then you also have sounds can turn that off and then diagnostics um, which will really just be used for a tech or somebody who is trained on this brewer. That covers all the functions that we need to know about here minus this stuff in here but all this stuff is really just for a tech so if you're a cafe owner you don't really need to know this but you do have more options here we're not going to cover that though and then I'm going to exit out 
and I am waiting for that to save. It just saved and we're good to go. If you notice now, we have this little green button. That's the rinse thing I was telling you about before. So I'll go ahead and rinse this and we'll brew a pot of coffee. You'll notice here that that does take about a minute to do those 32 ounces that we had it for. You may not want to wait for that, so you may just want to disable that, which is what we had it at before. But I'm just showing you guys that as a cool option that this has. And it's also rinsing my filter at the same time. This is pretty unique to Curtis, as far as I know. Uh, they give you uh, this handy guide for programming this thing right here. You can program it to count up or count down, uh, how long you want it to do that for, so then you can track how fresh your coffee is. Uh, it has this whole other side uh, instructions on it as well, um, but pretty handy. Definitely easier than uh, than uh, holding a timer uh, and doing that manually as I used to do in coffee shops. But um, these are a bit more expensive than your traditional air pot, as you might guess. Um, that's battery powered, but typically, uh, well, we haven't seen one of those batteries run out before something else happens to one of these as it tends to do uh, in coffee shops. But now that we've rinsed this and emptied that. So as you can see here, this is all fully rinsed out, my paper filter that is. So I'm gonna get some coffee. Today we are using the uh, Kenya Kiangoi AA uh, from 49th Parallel, our neighbors to the north. Uh, I'm gonna grind some of this up and get it going here. All right, got my freshly ground coffee. It's getting that all in there. I'm going to brew a full batch of this real quick, make sure my filter is okay there. Let's use Brian's brew. Like I was saying earlier, you do have the option for large or small. Hold that down and it starts a brewing. Let's make sure that's flipped up. If you've ever worked in a coffee shop, you've probably done something like that and then dumped all your brewed coffee all over the countertop, but glad I caught that today. If you don't want to spend a ton of money on these shuttle style carafes, speaking of which, I put that on wrong. That is okay for now. You can always do your traditional air pot styles as well. These cost anywhere from a quarter to a fifth as much as these do. Uh, they don't have that cool tracking device. They're not as convenient to dispense, but if they break, you're not heartbroken. I'm going to let this brew and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, this just finished brewing. We brewed a full batch. I messed with the programming on this earlier, so don't believe those numbers. I'm going to go ahead and taste this. This is going to be pretty hot because I literally just brewed it. Yeah, that's a good cup of joe. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, really the temperature accuracy on this is pretty good. Uh, and then also the fact that you can control those blooms and pre-infusion and all that sort of stuff. So it really lends a good cup of coffee. Uh, awesome programming on this machine. Looks really nice. Is reliable from what we've seen in the field. Um, has some extra programming, but you don't necessarily need that. Uh, overall, just a solid brewer if you're a specialty coffee shop and you're looking to maybe upgrade your brewer from something older, uh, or if you're opening a coffee shop and you want to make some really tasty brewed coffee. Pairing this with a good grinder is going to lend you some great results, even without a ton of programming. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about this brewer. If you have questions about commercial equipment, maybe you want to open your own sh coffee shop, maybe you want to upgrade your equipment, doesn't matter if you're a cafe, a restaurant, a bar, we'd love to talk with you about that. So feel free to give us a call. Uh, talk to me, one of the other people on our commercial team. Anyways, if you have questions or comments, you can also leave those below in the comments section. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more reviews uh, of home equipment, commercial equipment, anything like that. Also subscribe to those notifications for when we put out new videos. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.